Okay, we're going to talk about cleaning, or a technique I use, cleaning black powder firearms, generally long arms now, um, in general. And you can use these techniques no matter what it is, rifle, smoothbore, and what gauge caliber. Well, if any of you remember the cartoon from the 50s and early 60s, Felix the Cat and his magic bag of tricks, well, this is Koba's magic box of black powder stuff and I strongly suggest if you're going to get into this <clears throat> get some sort of a tool, this is an old toolbox toolbox, tackle box, something and start putting your cleaning accessories, all your stuff, your you know wrenches and things you're going to need have it all in one thing and you can take this to the range and use it you know it's kind of a suggestion, something you start thinking of, especially if you're going to start accumulating this. You see I got all of this and it's it's a mess. There's the powder measures, starters, caps. I keep everything right in there. Balls and that powder I carry in a separate ammo can because you have to be careful with it. But all the tools and accessories, jags, cleaning stuff, I keep in there. And that way I take it right with me to the ranch. Alright, so let's start. Okay, like I said in the previous video, cleaning the pistols, revolvers and that are pretty straightforward. You use a standard cleaning setup <coughs> and the brush and everything and a jag. Okay, and with black powder, especially with a rifle or so, you use what's called a button jag. All right. So let's start. You're going to need a rod, okay? And I have this shotgun rod, this old clean bore shotgun. Sorry about that. And it comes in three sections, and it's quite heavy, okay? As compared, I was using the stainless steel rod. We'll zoom in here. Okay, this is quite a heavy duty rod compared to your standard cleaning rods that go like for 30 calibers. I was using these stainless ones for a while and as you see it's kind of broken or uh, so if you're going with a larger caliber like uh, 50, 58 try to get one of these and another thing the handle doesn't move and that's important most modern cleaning rods the handle's on a ball bearing, so when you go through, the rod goes with the rifling. You want one with a fixed handle. And I'll go over that here in a minute. My battery's running out. Let me get reset. Okay, like I said, you want a good heavy-duty rod. This is an old shotgun rod. And like I said, the handle doesn't turn, and I'll explain why. Now generally the rod will have one size thread in there, which is an 8 something or other, 32 in that. And they're kind of a standard size. And how this rod would work is like for these giant threads on shotguns, you would screw this adapter into the rod and then it would accept the shotgun thread. Okay. So, <clears throat> there are different size threads. There's an 8, uh, I know these, some of these are 1032, 824, something, you know, or 28. And uh, you may need little adapter plugs. These came with the uh, shotgun rod itself. You got that one. And then I bought one. <clears throat> this is one you'll have to get. Is it's the 8 thread and the 1032 so if you screw up and get the wrong size thread it won't fit in the rod you can get an adapter so you're going to start collecting adapters you know as you go along and this strange one what this does is this goes on a threaded rod and then has something for a cleaning attachment this goes I think this was made up for like using the cleaning rod out of a muzzle loader. I'd screw this on the end of the cleaning rod on the thread and then I can put a uh, <coughs> cleaning 
implement of that size on there. So <clears throat> these adapters are available. Track of the Wolf has them. And they're available in several places, but Track of the Wolf probably has the easiest site to navigate and go through. So be prepared to accumulate little adapters in that. And a lot of the larger muzzle-loading calibers, like 69 is a 12-gauge, 75 or the Brown Bess is like a 10-gauge. So a lot of your shotgun caliber brushes in that will work with these old smoothbore muskets more of the muskets. The smoothbore muskets, the early ones that are unrifled, are more like shotguns. And there's various calibers in that. Okay? Alright, and we're going to go by caliber. All of this is caliber. There are four basic tools or jags in that that you should have and what I use in as standard. Be it 58, 69, whatever. Go to Track of the Wolf and get them in that uh, caliber. First is a button. Uh, a button jag. And why you want a button jag for black powder is the smokeless powder ones. You get a jag set have a little point to catch the uh, patch. You don't want that because you are running this down into a flat bottom tube. So you get the jag. And this, you'd put a patch over it, and I'll show you when we put the 58 caliber one. This isn't it because they're black from being used. You would put that in there and uh, with a patch and run the patch in to clean it. This is a scraper. Now, the reason this is important, the scraper, is what this does. It goes on the end of the rod, and that's why you need a rod it does not have a handle that turns because you're going to turn this and what this does is this goes into the bottom of the barrel <coughs> in a, and against the breech plug and scrape the residue from inside the barrel because all black powder guns have a buildup of fouling or what is called caking and how you look at it is like this. Say this is your barrel, this is the end where the breech plug is. You will get a buildup in the base after four or five shots of unburnt powder. Uh, this is where a lot of the uh, reenactors have a problem. If they don't go down there and clean it up, it actually will build up quite a bit because they're just firing blanks, they're not firing uh, a live round. What this will do is go in. And any of the buildup on the bottom, this will scrape it out and loosen it up or get it out of there. Okay, another thing you'd need, and this also is caliber specific, this collar. This is a stuck ball remover. It's a good thing to have. And again, that's why you need a cleaning rod where the handle does not freely rotate on bearings. Because you're going to have to put this down. This collar guides this down the barrel. So it doesn't move, and you get on the center of the ball, and then you would turn this into the ball, and then draw out the ball from the barrel. This little corkscrew thing is uh, probably the only tool that does not depend on caliber. What this is for is if you get a patch down in the bore, like when you're cleaning with this jag, the patch comes loose, the patch is down there. You put this down there, and turn this around, and it'll grab the patch and you can pull the patch out. All it has to do is get that little sharp point in the cloth and yank it out. And also patches, you should use cotton, soft cotton absorbent patches. Uh, them synthetic weird ones they sell, that, that ain't going to hack it. Okay, so that's your different tools that you need and I suggest you accumulate the four of these and get a cleaning rod that it fits on. Now we're going to go take a, uh, oh, the one thing I left out is a brush. You should have a brush of some sort. You know, you go to the black powder. This here, I believe, is a 54 caliber brush. Okay, and however you got to mount that, this may have to be mounted like in this adapter. Yeah, it's not going to go into the end of the rod. So the rod has a smaller thread. This goes in, run your brush, 
and uh, then we go with the patch. Okay, so <clears throat> those are the, it's five things you should have. Okay, and then you get your adapters per se as your cleaning rod goes. See, we'd have to use that on this rod to use that brush. But, do we have to use it for the... See, you got a choice. That's where you got to know what thread is in your rod because you can get them where you don't need the adapter, but it's good to have it anyway because if you screw up and buy the wrong thing, then you can still use it. Okay, so I'm going to try to set this up this is a 58 caliber Civil War type musket, the Enfield, and the rod here. Now this is the short barrel one, this is not the long barrel one. So when getting a rod, this rod will barely clean this rifle barrel, okay? If you got a 40 inch full length one, you're going to have to get another rod and just use the one middle section and it should get you there. So choosing your rod depends on your gun, okay, and it's difficult to find 40 inch long or 46 inch long rods that are sturdy and good. Like I said, I was getting away with getting two kits and extending this, uh, it's about a quarter inch stainless steel rod and they were good, but eventually they would break and give in. I don't know about this. The reason I haven't used it in the past is because, like with my flintlock musket and that, I'd have to get two or three more of these to extend it out to 40 inches or so, and they don't make this anymore. I found that out this morning. So, <clears throat> what I do in general, when I'm out on the range, okay, is this. Alright, sorry about the interruption. Bear in mind, I am not a reenactor. Now, depending on what you're using these guns for or firing them, there are rules and certain procedures and things that have to be done. Reenactors are probably during their uh, living history thing are shooting basically a blank. They're not firing a projectile. And there are rules and everything into that. And it's a different ball game. So, and then <clears throat> I do know that there are people and there's associations here in the United States where they do shoot live ammo. I'm only going to shoot live ammo. I'm not going to fire just a blank or anything. I'm shooting a projectile. Okay, I do know that people compete both here and my buddy Cap and Ball in Europe. It's a big deal. And when you go to these competitions, they take it pretty serious. There's a set of rules of what you can do and how you clean it and how often or how many shots and that. But this is just me going out to the range and shooting the gun in a casual leisurely thing. No rules, no regulations, I'm not competing. Alright, so generally what I do with any black powder firearm, cartridge or whatever, I get five, six shots out of it and now you're going to have a build up. So I do a quick cleaning and I'll show you how I do it. What I would do is put a brush on there and use some bore solvent maybe and just run the brush down with some bore solvent and loosen it up. Then I would put my jag. Now you have to have the right caliber jag. Too big it won't go down, too little the patch will get stuck down there. And generally what I do, I found I take hydrogen peroxide. Okay, I'll soak the patch with hydrogen peroxide, one, maybe two. And then you just take the patch Place it over the bore, line the little button jag up in there, and then it goes in. Move some of this other crap out of the way. And I would run it down and run it back. See, the jag, the right size, holds the patch in there. Okay? So I'd run the patch down with hydrogen peroxide. There's some gunk on there already. See? Just sitting there. <clears throat> Why hyd hydrogen peroxide? Hydrogen peroxide kind of dissolves the falling, and if you like get black 
black powder on your hands at the end of the day. If you wash your hands off, put a little hydrogen peroxide, it'll take the black off the skin of your hands. Okay, so now I place the hydrogen peroxide in there to let it work, and it, it dissolves some of the black powder following. Now I would put the scraper on, okay? Now the scraper just goes down, and it's a little bit tighter fitting than the thing for the patch. Go to the bottom and you turn it, and you'll hear the crap moving around in there. And then you would pull this out, and there'd be residue on there, and just leave it. And then what I would do then is put the button jag back on, okay, take a patch, and I would soak it in alcohol, rubbing alcohol, just get both of these things in the drugstore, just standard rubbing alcohol, and run that patch down there and try to get most of the build up, try to pull it out, you might not get it all. What the alcohol does is kind of any of the unburnt residue, the alcohol kind of reinvigorates it to get it to burn. And you can actually make a concoction of black powder bore cleaner that there are different parts of this, some other stuff, and will clean black powder following right out of there. Okay, I've made the other stuff, but generally I keep two bottles of this in a box when I go, <clears throat> and that's my range cleaning. That's not cleaning the gun to the end of the day. It's getting the caking and buildup out. And then I'd fire another five rounds and repeat this and keep doing it. Why? Because if you don't, you're going to build the gun up, you're going to get misfires, especially with a flintlock. Um, if that caking gets around the flash hole, that's when you're going to have misfires. Okay, and that's what I basically do to clean <coughs> the guns up. Now, you can use the same technique when you get home. You can do that, you know, to loosen it, loosen the stuff up, try to get the crud out. And when you go to clean it, there are several different gizmos and stuff you can use. One thing is you can disassemble the gun, take the barrel action out with the nipple on, put it <clears throat> in a container of hot boiling water with this jag and just a patch, flush it out. Sometimes that's what I do. Once you get down there and you get it wet, you create a vacuum, you'll suck the hot water up and down the barrel, flushing out the nipple. Then I'll go and take the nipple off, okay, and then do it again, and then all the big particles and black crap comes out of there, and that way you've had hot water flush out your nipple, flush all the big residue out of the barrel, and then <clears throat> after you dry it off. Now this is where the hotter the water, the better, because it'll evaporate. But you want to be on that. Use WD-40, which dissipates water, or you can use this here, bottle stall or bottle stall or whatever. Um, they either come in a spray. This comes with a pump. You can pump it out. And there's even wipes. So there's several different versions of this product which are all very good and they prevent rust. So does this. I used to in the old days just hose everything down with WD-40, then lean the barrel on a rag up, muzzle down, and let any water run out, then wipe everything down, and then coat it, oil it, and go. So that, that's how I basically clean it. And as for bore cleaners, you can use this stuff here was good, but I had some other stuff that Dixie Gunworks sold as a concentrate, and you mix it, I think, with distilled water or something, and you make this solvent. It's a water-based solvent. I think it's a greenish color, green or blue color, and you can put that on the patch, and they say that it's chemically formulated to dissolve all of the uh, salts that cause the corrosion and rust that is inherent with black powder, okay? You know, because talk about corrosive priming, black powder is highly, highly corrosive. <clears throat> so that's your basic cleaning techniques. And that's what I use no matter what, whether it's a smooth bore musket or whatever, 
that's what I do. And actually, when I fire black powder cartridge guns, I do run the jag in a patch with a brush every five shots to clear the barrel out. Because in a black powder cartridge gun, when you're shooting the gun, it builds up and it'll actually start, you can overpressurize and blow the gun up if you don't clean the fouling up. And different powders foul differently, okay? Swiss powder, which the target shooters like to use, does not leave a lot of fouling in the barrel. But what it does leave in there is hard and stays in there, and it's difficult to get out. Go-X is probably the middle of the road, okay? It leaves fouling, but it's not real hard like the Swiss, and it's not as bad if you go with that Graffs or Schutzen. Schutzen leaves heavy kind of gummy. It's not really hard, but it, it's more. I did a video where I shot a 4570 with all the different types of powder, and I would show you after five shots what come out. And the shoots, and it wasn't hard, but it left the most residue in there. So that's going to vary, okay, on the brand of powder you use, how fast this will cake up or, or get clogged up, okay. And that's just my take on it. If you, you know, do something else or shoot more or whatever, that's fine. But that's just what I do. It's my own personal choice in this. So that's what you're going to need to do. And like I said, you're either going to have to select a rod, a specialty rod for the length. Because I know that musket has just about a 40 inch long barrel or something. So investigate that. And, you know, you're going to need it to clean your guns and maintain them. I got another one of these coming. Even though they're not made, I found somebody selling one. So I'll have the section in there. So if I have a full-size gun, I'll be able to get down in there. And I like this because it's, you know, this thing here is about 3 8 in diameter or something. And it's pretty sturdy. It's an older style. And like I said, the important thing is the handle don't move. Now, the only other choice you would have if you can't find a rod, is you'd have to maybe make one. It's kind of difficult when it's 40 inches long on a lathe to get that hanging out to tailstock and drill and tap this. But that may, you know, there are, I have several different little things I made in there myself years ago. Okay, so that's it on the cleaning, and that gives you some information, some food for thought, and start gathering your tools and equipment. Um, you know, these here will need some sort of nipple wrench, okay? And, uh, oh, there is another thing for we go. Like I said, I take the gun apart, put it in a bucket. <clears throat> they do sell devices to where you can take this gun when you're done with it, pull the nipple out, and they have a thing they'll screw in there with a hose that you can have a separate bucket without disassembling the gun and do the same thing. Flush the bore out with water, solvent, whatever you want. Okay, they even make for flintlocks, they make something like a little needle and a rubber thing. Same thing. It is another technique you can use. Okay, but you're going to need the button jag and a rod in order to do that pumping action to pump the water, solvent, whatever, through the gun. So that is another option. There are other different cleaning options. I just showed you mine there. All right.